Welcome to the first ever Discord Mead. This is a mead that was created by my Discord crew, and I was the person who just actually made it. They made all the ideas and the recipe. Um, I have my friend Carlos from Texas Longhouse Mead here to help me with this. Carlos has been an integral part of this mead and its whole process. So Carlos, welcome. Glad you're here. Thanks. So um, I say you're an integral part, and I, and I mean that 100%, because this mead, in a lot of ways, was spearheaded by, by you it, as you um, kind of led our crew down the road with it. So what happened yeah. was uh, I started this, I, I made a poll um, to talk about the style of the mead that we wanted to make. And everyone in the Discord voted on the style. I think I put probably seven or eight styles. I can't remember at the time. Yeah. It ranged from everything from a sizer down to, you know, I don't think I put Bilbo Mel, but essentially the whole range of, of meads spectrum. Oh, yeah. And so we ended up with a black mead. So a black mead is a black current based mead. And it worked out really perfectly because I have, one, I have ants, but two, I have this black current wine base. Now, some people are gonna cringe big time because, um, not everyone's a big fan of this. I don't know if you've used this before, Carlos, but not not the black currant, but I've used the the puree uh, flavoring like that before, the wine base. Did you have a good success from it, in your opinion? Uh, for uh, for mine, I had a I call it a success as I got the profile I was looking for, but not quite the whole well-roundedness. Like it, yeah. it was missing something like that you don't get with fresh fruit. Yeah. So, well, I ended up using this because this was what I had at the time, and I, I still have about half of it left, a couple more gallons. So, all right. So, our first poll, we had um, all those different styles. The next one was the kind of honey for our black mead, and we had things like wildflower, clover, raspberry, blueberry, avocado blossom. Um, the fun fact about this right here, I think I have every single uh, varietal of honey in my house right now that's listed except for mesquite blossom. So um, that was kind of a fun thing. And we ended up voting on avocado blossom, which worked out perfectly because I had it, of course. So we started black currant, avocado blossom. We're building the recipe, you can tell. And then we voted for our yeast. So our yeast turned, was from this group right here, you can see. And they voted on the Kvaik Voss, which is another great yeast. The, a couple other things we decided to add um, because we, I don't think we felt like there was enough there, or at least I didn't. I didn't feel like the those three ingredients were gonna be unique enough. So I decided to add more options. We added some spices. We picked two spices and this one was pretty, um, people were very involved in this one we picked vanilla and orange zest so this is a black currant avocado blossom honey uh kvike voss orange zest and vanilla bean mead now based off that description alone what was your initial reaction when we landed there uh you know a lot of people you know they're kicking back they're like oh i hope you like you know Hope you like it really acidic or really tart because that's all black currant is and it's so, all you know i was happy for it you know uh yeah. currants are one of those fruits that i, I, I do want to work with and i'm like oh you know this is gonna be really good you know or at least really interesting to see because again it's one that i want to do so let's see how it goes and then at first you know like getting through the polls is like all right you know I want to say the first one was all right, picking which which mead we were going to go with. You know, there was for a, for a minute there, it was neck and neck with like three of them. Like, all right, hey, you know, we need some yeah, more to vote. So it was uh, a toss up between. Well, it ended up really being overwhelming into a black mead by the end there. But for a while, it yeah. was like, I can't, it looks like it was uh, Acer Glen or possibly a uh, Methaglen or Pyment. So yeah. people were wanting those, but in the end, people were like, "Make a black mead." Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Towards the end, we were like, "Hey, you know, you know again in Discord, you know, hey, everybody, go vote." Then that's when everybody took off. That's when black mead took off, and then I was like, "All right, 
and then they're like, all right, get the Voss. I was like, and me, like, I'm, I'm getting really big into the Black Strains right now, so I'm more like, oh, this is gonna be really good now. Uh-huh. And then, you know, the trying to pick the adjuncts for it, you know, the the zest and the vanilla. Uh, oh, man, that that one, was such an interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I was a, a little stressed, and not gonna lie, like I put those on there. No, I don't want to say it was like a throwaway, but I was like, what are some things that would be really weird to put in? And of course, people were like zoned in on them and were like, let's do it. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't say I was trying to like guide people, um, but I was definitely like people like, you know, because there people were commenting like, all right, you know, you have to understand this. All right. You know, black currants, like I understand black currants are already tart. You're going to add lemon zest to it. You understand that's going to add more tartness to it. Right. Yeah, let's do it. I'm like. Hold on. <laughs> Did you understand? <laughs> so, like, I was trying to get people to think through the process versus just, like, throwing darts at a wall. Yeah. So, like, I wasn't trying to guide them, but I was trying to make them give more, not educated, but more uh, practical input. Yeah. But it ended up going that way, and I'm like, let's see what happens. <laughs> and, yeah, and so, just the two alone, vanilla bean and orange zest are, like, I mean that the real challenge I found with this one was was that I mean the three previous ingredients are pretty manageable. I mean yeast, of course, I would not say is an ingredient necessarily, but black currant and um, our avocado blossom honey those compare well. But the orange zest, yeah. vanilla bean. So the uh, the total recipe I made is right here and, and includes some back sweetening, of course. I ended up back sweetening with more avocado blossom honey. But let's walk through the process. So. We did this over the course of some live streams. Now, what's important for people to know, if you want to be involved in the future Discord need, you have to be a part of the Discord. So it's it's down below in the description. Um, and there's a specific channel for the this whole need process. But I did these on live streams and got to chat with people as we were doing this. So we started the mead. We mixed together our beginning recipe, which was like 26 ounces, 20. Yeah, 26 ounces of, of black currant uh, base, 2.25 pounds of avocado blossom honey, two grams of Kvike Boss, and then I used uh, Fermade O. I did this in a kind of lazy way. I just, I put a teaspoon of Fermade O in, I think about either the beginning or 24 hours later, I can't remember, because I was just being lazy. We let that ferment through that primary we came back after the primary and we racked it off into a new container and uh, did a taste test. It was tart, and I wish I I, uh, I wish I had like bottled a small amount for you and sent you it at each stage because that would have been interesting for you to see like what was it like after the primary. Um, yeah, the I wish I had done that. In hindsight, maybe I'll do that next time so that there's like a a tasting uh, palette, but. Went through that, came back in the secondary, racked it off of that, and we decided now we add the other flavors. So I ended up putting the vanilla bean in, oh gosh, now I have to remember now. I think I put the vanilla bean in after the orange zest. So we zested the orange. I put it in like the little hop cage, yeah. but I was really dumb and like, I put it all into the brew first and then I realized I needed to use the hop cage. So then I was like scooping, <laughs> it out to put it into the hop cage. That was a dumb moment. Put it in there. That sat in for roughly uh, about eight days. Also, I didn't mention, I'm so sorry. The starting gravity, 1.090. After that primary, 1.004-ish. Eight days of orange zest. And then, oh, oh, I see what I did. I've made too many meats since then. I also did add the, the vanilla bean in with the orange zest. I don't know why I did both at the same time. Maybe I realized that the vanilla bean needs more time, but the vanilla bean and orange zest went in at the same time. I took the orange zest out, left the vanilla bean in for another week or so, and then I pulled that out as well. Um, finally came back and said, all right, this needs to be stabilized to back sweeten. So we stabilized it. I used potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. Um, and then back sweetened with approximately six ounces of avocado blossom honey. And that is what you have in front of you right now. This uh, Frankenstein of a brew. So let's go ahead and get to tasting and smelling. 
Mm. What's the what do you get from the nose? Like I get I get the black current. Uh -huh. uh, it's like a not it's like a sweet it's a sweeter tart black current. At least the aroma. You know. Yeah. You have some that you can just smell, you're like, oh, like it makes you get that astringency, like when you smell certain things, you're like, ooh, that's gonna be really tart. This one is actually making my mouth water because you can, you, 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 I get the perceived sweetness from the aroma before yeah. the tartness. I get a little, um, the vanilla is slightly on the notes. It's like a softness. Yeah. And I think yeah. that attributes to the sweetness that you're also saying. Yeah, probably. You ready? Let's do it. I hope it transported well. <laughs> it did. Yeah. So, uh, like I get the I get the slightest stringency right in the back, but right at right at the front, the sweetness ooh, the sweetness coats the tongue until it hits the back, and then that's where I get the stringency and the tartness from it. Uh -huh. The the zest I, is like not overwhelming to me. That's one thing I like mm -hmm. is it's like it's just kind of round, like it's just kind of like the air. It's just kind of roundy, but you're not like being pressed on. Yeah, that, that that for me that was a big that was my biggest concern. I was like, man. Because if I remember correctly, it was one whole zest. Like, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, one, yeah. I, yeah, I probably well, over zested. <laughs> but, <laughs> but again, you know, you can you can put a lot in. It just depends on when you take it out. So, like I said, on the front I get the sweetness. The back I get the astringency. The current goes straight over the tongue. You know, and, and coats with the, the the sweetness. I get some some of the zest in there. And the vanilla, like when you exhale, you can, you can, I get the vanilla that comes through the nose. Uh -huh. uh, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, like it's, I'm, I'm not saying it, it gets a little bit more into like the cough syrup, but like you can, you can almost tell like it's good, but mm -hmm. like right at, right at the end, like after, you know, like sitting here now, it's been a couple of seconds, like you start getting that, that cough syrup, like coat, yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I totally agree. Yeah, there's something funky that that kind of the uh, uh, development of flavor, which makes this interesting, is pretty wild. You know, it doesn't really just kind of dip off. It does have little peaks and valleys, but at the end of that valley is a little bit of a funk to it. Yeah, like the, like the only way I can explain it is like like almost cough syrup, but without yeah. being that nasty cough syrup. Yeah. Well, this is like black currants. I wouldn't. I'm not going to say they're in the same vein as a cherry, but to me, I put them pretty close in the cherry family. You know that yeah. that style. And cherry is like notorious for being cough syrup. You know, I don't oh, think yeah. I've ever made a cherry mead that's been like not cough syrupy. Um, and it's probably yeah. just because we all had Robitussin growing up. You know, and you have PTSD <laughs> essentially from it. Yeah. Um, I so one thing I like about this is that. I do like the level of sweetness I landed on because it's not overbearingly sweet. It just provides, it kind of ups the value of the black current. It fights against some of that acidity. Yep. The zest is also a little bit combated because there is some sweetness. Um, the, the real challenge with this one was that vanilla bean, I think. I knew that I was going to get black current and zest super easy, but yep. the vanilla bean was hard. Yeah, I like do I, like, like that I, it's a little present. Yeah, like I said, I, I like when you get a nice good exhale, just like out through your nose. That's where I get all the vanilla that comes through. Uh -huh. um, like when you cut a vanilla bean, scrape it, and if you just smell like the knife that you scraped it with, that's what I get in the nose. Yeah, I I'm pretty pleased with this. The only thing it's missing to me is some like a little bit of tannic gripping mouthfeel. Um, I think you get a little mouthfeel from the acidity side, but I do wonder had I maybe oaked it a little bit or done something that gave it a little more value in that regard, how would how it would be. Like maybe some, uh, even vanilla and oak to keep pronouncing vanilla. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, like again, you know, depending on uh, what, what direction you want to take it, I can see this. I can see this like really good with like uh, American like heavy toast, uh -huh. um, or uh, my personal favorite is Hungarian. Oh, okay, yeah. Because the Hungarian 
like in all my videos, like I explain all the time, Hungarian actually has like a sweeter note to it. Like you still mm. get the you still get the oak flavor, but the Hungarian actually adds to like the sweetness of a mead, and I think that that would actually pretty, be pretty good with this. Yeah, I I do think oaking would be interesting uh, in general. But what's fun about this to me? So this was started on July thirteenth, and you know people might see this video two months from now, but it is September 4th. So we're um, about 48, 49 days old on this thing. Is, is my math right? Does that seem right? 30? Yeah. So we're really, we're like maybe a month and a half-ish, almost two months old. And it's pretty dang like smooth for, for being two months old. I don't get a lot of heat. Yeah, I don't get, I don't get any heat, honestly. Like it, it's, you can tell it's alcoholic, but not like, it doesn't burn. You don't mm -hmm. get the alcohol smell. You don't get. There's no fusels in here whatsoever. Uh, which it's is dangerous because it's like 11. <laughs> percent so, Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. That's, but, that's no, uh, interesting. I'll be really interested to see how this ages, uh, mm -hmm. especially especially because the vanilla should express express itself more as it ages. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I like it. It's good. Um, like I said, it's it's almost you get that cough syrup feel without mm -hmm. it being the cough syrup. Yeah, um, it's kind of hard to explain, but I think that's just from like you were saying the black currants, how you know the cherries and stuff, the way that just develops itself. But it it's not cough syrup. Yeah, you know, it, I, I know it sounds weird saying oh. It, tastes like cough syrup but it's not cough syrup you know and tastes better than cough syrup but it's like cough syrup you know <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I totally i totally feel it i get i get what you're saying completely and i think that uh i think that this thing this recipe actually worked out really well and i was very nervous for it like i said that zest in the vanilla when we oh, landed yeah. on those i was like well crap what am i gonna yeah. do but nice. it worked out to my surprise and and i'm very glad it worked out um Mm -hmm. I would love to challenge anybody to make this recipe. I think the hard thing about this one is that you can alter it some, but to really get the experience, you probably want to stay true to black currant and avocado blossom honey. And if you can do Kavai Kvass and those things, only because this is a really weird combination of flavors. It's not just like a sizer, you know, where you can substitute out QA23 yeast for boss, you know, or whatever. So you kind of, probably want to stay true to the recipe. So I'll put it up, of course, and you, you can attempt it if you'd like. I'd love to know what you think. But uh, I I want to do this again. I want to do another Discord mead in the future because this one was a lot of fun to do. Um, and I think this next time I do it, I want, not that I, I don't want zero participation in the creation, I, I, in the, how do I say it, description of it. Uh, inception of it i don't really know what the word is but i would love to let someone in the discord be the leader of mm -hmm. the style of the mead you know make the poll of the whatever and kind of go through and be the person who leads it instead of me coming up with the ideas i don't think i necessarily curated this to existence because i tried to put enough variables to where i couldn't i couldn't point us in a direction we wanted to go and i certainly did not land you know maybe in my brain i had some ideas <laughs> we did not land where i thought we were going to go um, yeah. which i'm very thankful for actually but next time this happens i think it's going to be with somebody else as the leader and then i'll still create the mead and do the stuff but mm -hmm. um it'd be interesting i i want to invite everybody to the discord to be a part of this not just this process but the discord itself is full of mead makers like you and me, like Carlos and I, who love doing this. And we love to make weird things and regular things and answer questions. Um, don't don't worry about asking any question in our Discord. You can ask whatever you want. And people like myself, like Carlos, like all of the other people in the community want to help serve as best we can. Mm -hmm. So Carlos, thank you for uh, not only leading this thing, you know, as it's gone along, but helping me with the taste test, because this has been a lot of fun. I'm pretty pleased with it. Could it use some tweaking, of course, but for our first round, I think it was okay. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, especially 
severe drastic end of the spectrum that we wanted it to go in mm -hmm. it, it, i do have to say that i i am pleased with this that i, I would make this uh, uh, like there, there should... would be there would be some things that like i would make it the same way you did but maybe uh -huh. like 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 i do with all my needs i'm gonna make this again but then i'm gonna take a little piece and change add one other thing to it to see if we can make it better not not that this yeah. is bad but progress it yeah 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 absolutely and i i challenge again like everybody the recipes down below in the description feel free to make this i would love to know your experience with it it's been a lot of fun um join the discord i think that you will you will not be disappointed with the community you get to be involved in with the discord you will have a lot of fun um and you get to do fun things like this this is stuff that my, only my discord people get to have an input on so uh, if you want to do that, join us there. But Carlos, thank you for your time. Um, we'll be back with Discord Mead Part 2 or Round 2. This was Round 1. Um, I hope to see you in that Discord. And I want to make a big plug towards Texas Longhouse Mead, who is Carlos right here. He has uh, a YouTube channel where he also makes mead and does videos and does all of these amazing things. Um, he'll be down in the description. Make sure you subscribe to him, support the mead community, and do all of those things to help us continue to grow. So, thanks, Carlos. Appreciate your time. And uh, we'll see you later. Cheers. Cool.